everyone. My name is Mohamed Reza Zarifi and I want to present our paper about steel defect segmentation. As you all are aware of, steel sheets are one of the most important products in our world. The reason is uh, their huge applications in different industries. However, they are so vulnerable and can be easily damaged during their transportation or uh, manufacturing process. So we decided to see if a deep learning model can, uh, if a deep learning model can help us uh, detecting these damages or flaws uh, or not. Uh, according to previous works that had been done on this uh, subject, we came to a conclusion that uh, we can consider it both an object detection task or a segmentation. Uh, but our images were more like a um, texture form uh, than some object in some place. So we decided to take the segmentation approach and we used two famous architectures for it, FCN8 and UNIT. Before going any further and talking about our models, uh, I want to talk about our data set a little bit. Uh, we use several steel defect data set. Uh, it contains, it contains uh, some images from steel sheet surfaces as you can see in this picture with four types of uh, defects. Uh, it has a big issue uh, and that's uh, it's imbalanced classes. As you can see in this slide uh, most of the data is from defect number three and following that uh, there are a lot of images with no labels and only 15% of our uh, data set is from defects number one, two or four. To overcome this issue uh, we use two methods. Uh, one of them is dice loss. Uh, dice loss uh, I will explain it later but uh, the other one is class-wise augmentation. Uh, in this method, uh, we try to produce some images uh, for the defects with fewer data, data and uh, make a data set with equal number of uh, images in each class. And we used some uh, simple augmentations for it. For example, vertical flip, uh, horizontal flip, rotations in different ang uh, angles and something uh, like that. But what is dice loss? Uh, dice loss is a loss function uh, which is extracted from dice coefficient and dice coefficient itself is a, a special case of um, Tversky index. Uh, as you can see if we put alpha and beta as half in Tversky index, uh, we will have the dice loss uh, formula which is identical to F1 score. Uh, but uh, to visualize what is happening, uh, we can assume uh, passing one image to the model and uh, uh, assuming its uh, output as a tensor with four channels. Uh, each channel represents uh, a, a class and uh, in conventional evaluation metrics uh, each pixel is uh, evaluated based on uh, the prediction of model uh, and it, it is dependent on uh, the classes. But in dice coefficient uh, these tensors, uh, the output tensors are uh, converted to vectors and uh, the same thing happens to our grand truth so we have two vectors and uh, for each image and uh, their elements are compared to each other as you can see uh, we have a binary classification now and if we subtract this value from one uh, it can uh, be converted to a cost function uh, which is called dice loss uh, but uh, it is so simple 
if we use it alone and uh, it cannot give us uh, proper results uh, I mean they are not proper enough uh, so we add binary cross entropy to it and uh, uh, ultimately we use uh, this combination as our loss function uh, we also use two approaches for this uh, work one of them is four class approach in it and in it uh, each class uh, is the most uh, I'm sorry uh, each of these classes are for uh, one of those uh, types of uh, defects I talked about earlier uh, but in five class approach we considered uh, pixels with no label a different class and uh, ultimately we compared the results to see which consideration is better uh, for our models uh, as I mentioned earlier we used unit and FCN8 our first model is unit uh, it is originally designed for uh, medical images and uh, they are so much uh, similar to uh, our data set uh, among the activation functions uh, ELU performed better and be better than the others and uh, the original structure was too simple as you can see here so we decided to use uh, some backbones at, uh, as its uh, encoder and decoder stage and we took uh, five famous classification models uh, for uh, this purpose and uh, in the end we added some uh, learning rate reducer to uh, get this result as you can see uh, efficient net B0 uh, outperformed the other backbones and uh, from now on uh, we use uh, this uh, unit for other comparisons uh, I mean the unit with efficient net B0 backbone uh, but uh, FCN8 was originally designed for extracting more complex uh, features uh, for example something like a picture from nature uh, it needed some data normalizations and uh, sigmoid uh, performed better than uh, the other activation functions uh, we tried on it and we wanted to uh, use some backbones on FCNA2 uh, but uh, the computational costs were so high and uh, I think it took 10 times longer than a unit uh, to be trained so uh, we didn't have the proper hardware for it and uh, we did not use uh, backbones for FCN8. In the end, uh, we used our methods. Uh, as you can see, five class approaches uh, gave us a really good dice coefficients, but uh, they are not trusted. I mean, they cannot be trusted because uh, in five class approach, uh, pixels with no label are um, um, they are uh, they give us uh, a lot of true positives and um, they are uh, and these true positives are not really useful uh, because uh, we want to find defects and uh, the pixels with no defects are a lot and uh, these high numbers are because of that and if you uh, see the output images of uh, five class approach uh, you can see that uh, its, its performance is not good uh, 
as it is said here uh, but uh, so uh, we took FCN 8 with 4 class approach and uh, unit with 4, four class approach and used our class wise augmentation on them and you can see it improved uh, the results FCN 8 uh, FCN 8's dice coefficient, uh, I think it just increased about 3% and uh, unit 1%. As you can see, uh, the original one uh, was 75. And we also compared uh, how they worked for each class. As you can see, again, unit outperforms FCN8 uh, in both of uh, dice coefficient and IOU metrics. And uh, in defect 2, we can see that uh, FCN8 had a really poor performance. Uh, and it will be shown later that uh, how poor it is on uh, output images. Uh, to see the results uh, better and uh, understand them better, uh, we, we used uh, two images from our data set. Uh, first image contains uh, some defects from types 3 and 4, and the second image contains defects from type 1 and 2. Uh, for the first image, as you can see, FCN8 could not uh, detect any defects from uh, type 3 uh, but unit uh, performed better and uh, saw the type 3 defect uh, and for the second image as you can see and it was uh, said by our dice coefficient and IOU uh, FCN8 did not uh, detect uh, anything as uh, defect number 2 while unit has a acceptable has an acceptable uh, performance on it and uh, again we saw that how unit outperforms fcn8 um, but uh, to conclude it we used fcn8 and unit as uh, two models that can help us for uh, defect segmentations of steel sheets and we saw uh, if we use a four class approach we can get better results and it is better not to uh, consider uh, pixels with no label as a separated class and we also saw that unit performed better than FCN8 and I think it's because uh, unit is originally made of uh, made for medical images and it has more residual con uh, more residual connections in it uh, which is uh, really similar to our data set and uh, we also saw that class-wise augmentation uh, improved the results of our models and uh, it can be used uh, in occasions uh, when we have um, uh, imbalanced data sets to uh, help us uh, uh, train our model uh, more efficiently. And in the end, uh, thanks for your attention and uh, we are ready to answer if uh, there is any question from us.